<clears throat> Ooh, I guess I lost my voice for five months. Weird. Wait for it. 1971 Plymouth Cuda, and you might be thinking to yourself, what sort of engine that bad boy got packed in there? Well, let's take a look at the back because there might be a hint. On closer inspection, you may notice the word Hemi. And no, it does not stand for hemihedral because as far as I understand, the owner of this car is not a crystal enthusiast. It stands for hemispherical combustion chambers, AKA greased lightning. But in all seriousness, under the hood is a 426 cubic inch Hemi V8. From the factory, it had a compression ratio of 10.2 to one, and it was very underrated at 425 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 490 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. And here's where things start to get a little bit interesting because this car participates with the fast drag class that's factory appearing stock tire and pretty much the rules state you can do whatever you like as long as it looks stock from the outside, but on the inside, you can do whatever you want with the exception of no nitrous oxide. That is not allowed. I need NOS. I need NOS. Uh, no you don't, Brian, and you're about to see that real quick. I need one of these. One of the big ones. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate the input, Brian. Well, actually, without nitrous, this car is actually putting out 1,000 horsepower. Now, just in case you aren't already fully torqued, let me say that one more time. 1,000 horsepower. It scares the shit out of me. Inside, you'll find a Torque Flight 3-speed automatic transmission, so it should be able to handle all of that Hemi power. And would you check that out? Column Shifter. You guys know how much I love that. Mmm. Mmm. And would you looky there, this thing's also got a roll cage, which is definitely needed for the speeds that it can achieve. And you might be wondering what sort of rear gears are in that car. Well, I thought you would never ask, because I don't know. I didn't have time to talk to the owner about that. Stock would have been 323 with 355 or 410 available. So if the owner is out there, leave a comment, help me out. Otherwise, the masses might feed me to the bees. Not the bees! Not the bees! Oh, and if you could just leave me the keys, that would be great. Uh, I just have a few errands uh, that I have to run. It's not the lightest car around, but it's not the heaviest either. Curb weight was 3,721 pounds. The 71 Cuda really wasn't a bad deal. The base V8 model sold for only $3,164. That Torque Flight automatic transmission, that set you back another 227 bucks. SureGrip was $41, and the absolutely nasty 426 Hemi would set you back a whopping $8. $171. That gives you a grand total of $4,303 and adjusting for inflation, that's around $28,373 today. And that makes me want to dive into my money pit, go back in time, and pick up at least one or two of these things. Would you like to guess how many 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda hardtops were produced with an automatic transmission? Did you say 50? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Idiot. It was 48. Cars Magazine tested a 1970 model Hemi Cuda with 410 gears, an automatic transmission, and it is of note that it was a convertible, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.45 seconds at 115 miles per hour. Not too shabby. Oh look, there's another car. Kind of funny how that always works out. 1969 Chevrolet Camaro. And sure, this car might look kind of plain Jane with the steel wheels and center caps and a lack of any sort of super sport trim, but I can assure you one thing. This is, in fact, a big dog. Da -da 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 -da. It's the one and only Deagle Double G. And that's because under the hood, this thing's got enough aluminum to make at least two Schlitz tall boys. Schlitz beer, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. I mean, is that really fair to Milwaukee to say something like that? Mm. 
427 cubic inches ZL1V8. We're talking aluminum block, aluminum cylinder heads, an aluminum intake manifold, and a Holly 850 double pumper on top. Of course, because of supply issues, some of them only had Holly 780s, but whatever. Factory compression ratio is 12 to 1, and these things were underrated at 430 horsepower at 5200 RPM and 450 pound-feet of torque. But like I said earlier, this is the fast class, and this car isn't even close to stock. We're talking 540 cubic inches, and it's making over 700 horsepower to the rear wheels. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want more information on this car and even see it on the dyno, well, I'm going to put a link to the owner's YouTube channel and you can check it out. His name is Jordan Pennington and he definitely knows what he's doing. So here's your instructions. One. Uh, you go to his channel. Two. You watch the video. Three. You subscribe to his channel. And that's the way you do it. It's in a box. And would you looky there, it's another column shift automatic. <laughs> Which is controlling a turbo 400 three speed and that thing should be plenty strong to handle all that horsepower. And the rear gears on this thing? Yeah, you guessed it. I don't know. From the factory, you could only get a set of 410 gears, and it even had a heat-treated ring and pinion, but what does this car have at this exact moment? Eh, unfortunately, I don't know. As you can imagine, the ZL1 engine is quite a bit lighter than a standard big block, around 150 to 180 pounds less. So that gives this car a curb weight of only about 3,500 pounds. <laughs> One area that the Camaro is at a disadvantage is its price. The base V8 that year started out at $2,727. Automatic transmission, that was another $225. Bucks. Posi 41. Mandated power front disc brakes were $64. And the ZL1 package would set you back $4,160. That gives you a grand total of around $7,217. And adjusting for inflation, that's $52,515 bucks today. A stock 1969 ZL1 Camaro was tested by High Performance Cars Magazine in August of 1969. It still had its stock exhaust and E7015 tires, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.16 seconds at 110 miles per hour. However, the exact same car had just been run by Superstock Magazine in May of 1969, and that day they threw on a set of open headers and six and a half inch slicks, and that thing ran the quarter mile in 11.64 seconds at 122 miles per hour. Conditions were pretty good this morning. Temperature was 61 degrees, humidity was only 26%, elevation 754 feet, and barometric pressure 29.48 inches. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's check it out. And the Camaro takes the win running a 9.66 second quarter mile at 142.95 miles per hour. But that Cuda was hot on its tail running a 9.79 second quarter mile at 143 miles per hour. And it is of note that the Hemi Cuda ran a lot quicker later in the day, but this was the only footage I had of these two cars racing each other. So how about we check that out one more time? 